Hi there! Today I'm going to be talking about a new paper released by Google, a new state-of-the-art machine learning model called Forum that is able to create a 3D model from a single 2D photo. Not only that, this machine learning model can extract the texture with colors disentangled from the lighting used in the photo. And if that wasn't enough, the textured 3D model is also ready to be animated. There's only one bad news. There is no source code yet and there's no demo. So we just have to trust that the, the results in the paper are accurate. All right, so there is no demo, but at least Google has made available uh, this website, which is forum.github.io. It shows you here some of the sample 3D models they were able to create with Forum. This one is a video clip, but here you have an uh, actual 3D model that you can play with. You know, you can rotate it, you can zoom it. It looks pretty good. Okay. And then you have this video here, which I recommend you watch it. It gives you a very high level overview of Forum. It explains the diagram that is in the paper. That's like their main diagram that you need to understand. And also it gives an example of some of the results. Uh, this is the 2D photo, this is the mesh, and then this is the 3D model with texture. Then some examples here of uh, photo editing, creative uses that you could have with Forum. And uh, another thing that is quite cool, the 3D models that you create with Forum, you can animate them. And so you could use that for, I don't know, for a, a video game. I'm looking forward to have that uh, capability in my new Pixel phone. Yeah, and uh, that's about it. Creating a 3D model from a 2D photo is the holy grail of 3D modeling. By traditional means, creating 3D models is actually quite difficult and quite labor intensive, quite expensive. So everyone is looking for an easier way and a cheaper way. So there has been a lot of research and papers in recent times, and I've covered a few of those in this channel, from the likes of NVIDIA, from Google, Facebook as well is very active in that area, and we know because of the metaverse. And everyone's trying to make it easier, so you can just take a single photo into the, of a person, of, or whatever object you want to uh, 3D scan, and then at the click of a button, you'll be able to get a 3D model. Right, I have here the forum paper. I'm going to give you a walkthrough of this paper and give you my understanding of, of forum and how it works. Forum is not just one neural network, it's a collection of neural networks arranged in a, a pipeline, okay? There's two sides. For any neural network, you need to train it and then you, you need to uh, run queries on it, right? Which is called inferencing. So I'm going to first talk about the inferencing part. So we have here this diagram, which gives you a, a neat overview of how Forum works in a nutshell for inferencing, and also gives you a little bit of a visibility of the uh, training pipeline, which I'll explain later. Okay, so here we see an input image. This is a cropped input image. So Forum, what it first does, if you give it a photo, like you see here, it will detect the person in that photo and then it will crop the person from that photo, right? And this is what is given to the model. So the first thing it does, it sends this image to the feature extractor. This uh, feature extractor calculates 256 features, which are feature images, it's a vector, okay? And then we have here this space X. This is a, um, a 3D space, okay? And what we do, right, for each point in this space, we project this point to the 2D, yeah, using a camera. We map the, the point to the feature images, right? So for each feature image that we've calculated beforehand, then we extract the pixels. So, so for each point, we would have something like 256 feature pixels. And this is where the pixel align uh, term comes from, because we are aligning each point in our 3D model with the pixels in the features. 
Okay, so at the end we get ZX, which is called pixel align features. Yeah, okay. And then we apply function F, and function F is a neural network. Okay, this neural network uh, does two things. First, it calculates for each point in the space X the distance of of that point to the closest surface. Okay. And then for that point, it also calculates that will be the color, the color without shading, okay? The, the pure color, if, you, if we can call it that, okay? And then it stores it, okay? Then it returns all the information that we need to construct the mesh, but the mesh then has a texture, right? So the texture is also returned by this function. So we, then we have the mesh here and the texture, right? And then we get X, which is the mesh with the texture applied, okay? From the mesh that we've calculated here, and this mesh is, is built using the Martian cube algorithm, which is a very popular algorithm in uh, computer graphics. There is another factor here that you can see here, L coming out of G. L is the illumination. When the photo was taken, using the bottleneck of the feature extractor, in this case, you can see the bottleneck, it doesn't include the full neural network. So basically what we're doing, we're taking away at least the last layer of the neural network, if not more, and then we we are left with something which is called the bottleneck of the neural network. And then that allows us to calculate the lighting applied to the photo. And with this lighting, knowing the lighting and the surface normals of the mesh, we are able to shade the mesh, well, the texture, according to the original lighting that we had in the photo. That gives us X, which now has lighting applied on top. Right, let's quickly talk about the data set that was used to train Forum, okay? So in total, 217 scans of people, real people, were used, okay? It's a very little data, so they've augmented this data by adding objects to the scans, like bags and different clothes and varied as many things as possible, okay? And augmented the data in that way, okay? Augmented means creating more varieties. So in total, they've uh, managed to get a data set containing 190,000 images. They also did a split between training and test data. They didn't want to use the same people in both sets, so they separated that strictly. And they also use different control lighting conditions because they need to teach forum how to calculate the uh, albedo color and uh, without the lighting on top. And uh, another thing that forum can do, not only can reconstruct the 3D surface of the person, the part that is visible in the picture, but also can do the back. And in order to do that, they had to also create uh, photos, of course, of the person, you know, so for each pose they had the person the front side and then the back side. Okay, now let's talk about the losses that were used during training. Losses are very important because losses that will guide our neural network towards perfection, right? And when I say perfection, I mean it's getting as close as possible to the intended result. In this case, we're trying to rebuild a 3D model from a 2D photo, so we want to get as close as possible to a realistic 3D model of the person in our photo, right? At each step during the training, our neural network is going to create a 3D model. We need to evaluate whether it's a good or a bad model. But not only that, we also need to tell the neural network if it's getting better or worse, okay? So we have two types of losses in the forum, right? So we have losses which are calculated from 3D sparse supervision, and then we have also losses calculated from rendering, okay? And I'll try to explain both. Right, let's not talk about sparse 3D supervision, but let me clarify first what is meant by sparse 3D supervision. When evaluating the 3D reconstruction of an object from a 2D photo while training, we have to find a way to tell the neural network if it's getting better or worse at getting the intended 3D geometry, right? So we need to compare the 3D geometry against the ground truth. If we were using a full 3D supervision, we would just 
take the whole 3D model, compare vertex by vertex, and you know, and then we would get an answer. But that's very difficult to do, right? So normally we don't just compare vertex by vertex, we just take samples from the geometry and compare it. Or we can even calculate some heuristics about the geometry that will tell us whether two models are assuming or not, okay? In the case of forum, they are taking a few samples from the ground truth, okay? And what they do, they take those points, then they take the surface they are reconstructing during training. By the way, this is not an, an actual mesh, it's a surface, right? It's a function that defines a surface. And what they do, they enforce that the distance between points in the ground truth mesh and points in the surface that the neural network is able to, to calculate during training is equal to zero, right? Because it has to be on a surface. So points have to be on a surface, so they should be, the distance between both should be zero, okay? And then they also check the normals, they compare the normals, and they also, for points which are outside the actual surface of the 3D object, they check for the sign to make sure that it's the right sign, like, you know, if it's out, it should be positive, and if it's in, it should be negative, okay? This is what sparse 3D supervision is, and that's how they're doing it here. And another thing they are doing here is a form of a geometric regularization. Regularization is normally used to avoid overfitting a model. In the case of 3D deep learning, it's actually very clear what it's being used for from a visual point of view it's avoiding certain undesirable uh, geometries. And one thing that happens quite often, right, when you're trying to reconstruct a 3D model, it's jagged edges. If you don't apply some kind of regularization, one which is used often is Laplacian uh, smoothing, then you'll get jagged edges, right? And that's what regularization is there for, is to make sure our geometry, while getting as close as possible to the ground truth, doesn't have any like undesirable aspects to it, like jagged edges or whatever, okay? That's a bit of an art, right, to decide what to use. It's experimentation as well. For the color, it's a similar thing, right? What we do, we compare the mesh in the ground truth, we get the texture, right? We calculate for each point that the actual color is the same as what we are uh, reconstructing during training. Let's now talk about the rendering losses. As it is explained in the paper, the losses calculated using 3D sparse supervision are enough to train the neural networks in Forum. But by introducing rendering losses, Forum is able to build uh, better 3D models with more visual accuracy, better color accuracy, and so on. But what are rendering losses? Rendering loss is a score which is calculated by comparing the ground truth 3D object rendered to 2D with the 3D object that was generated by the neural network during training, which is also rendered to 2D. To calculate rendering losses, we normally have to convert the 3D model to 2D using a camera, a light source, and using a rendering engine. In the case of forum, the rendering is not done for the full 3D object, but only for small image patches distributed across the model. In total, there are 512 image patches taken from each training example, which are used for supervision. And these are then ray traced from the camera to the scene and from behind the scene to the camera which allows us to locate the back and the front surface of the object. And then these are projected to 2D onto the feature maps that we've created before. And then from there, we calculate the rendering losses. It is a rather complicated algorithm. So if you really want to know exactly how it works, I recommend you to spend a few a few hours looking into it and understanding the mathematics. It's out of scope for this video, but you, you are free to do that. Okay, so let's look at the conclusions and some of the future work that they are planning to do in forum. The forum paper is the first paper that uh, has been able to build 
from a single 2D photo, a 3D model with color, with and without shading, and uh, it was also the first to recover the lighting model in the photo. It took the concept of pixel-aligned implicit functions, which was introduced in the PIFU paper. It took it one step further by calculating a sign distance field instead of the original in and out probability field. The forum paper also demonstrated that rendering losses improve the ability of the neural network to recover the surface color of the 3D model. But the, the Achilles heel in this paper is that they've used a very limited data set of people, only 217 scans. And the reason for that is because obtaining 3D uh, models is, is rather expensive and difficult. Yes, augmentation of 3D assets can help to stretch the data a long way, but the limitations are still quite obvious. There is less diversity on the people and clothes they can reconstruct, but not all is lost. So they mentioned here that in the future, they would like to explore weakly supervised differentiable rendering. Um, you, you probably don't know what that is, but actually I've covered differentiable rendering in the channel before. So you can watch a video on that, but just to give you a, a very quick summary, instead of trying to do supervision with 3D, we do supervision with 2D, yeah? And for that, we need to have a differentiable renderer. Right, so I'm going to finish here, and uh, I will just um, ask you a final favor, and this is only if you found this video useful. I would say, why not just click the like button, and then it will also help people who are interested in the same topic as you to find this video. I'm planning to do another video on the paper, which is the precursor to this paper, PIFU, right? So stay tuned. And I'll talk to you again soon. Happy coding.